Our next speaker is Anna. She's a product lead for the AI research team at JP Morgan Chase. Welcome, Anna. Hi, John Mark. How are you? Terrific. Take it Great. away. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you see the yeah, big slide. Please go. Okay. I'm sorry. I need one more minute. Uh, all right. I think Good now to you go see again. the two again. All right. Okay. <laughs> Um, thank you all for dialing in. We've had a set of great talks today, and I hope I can still hold your attention um, for this session where I'm going to be talking about product thinking in agentic AI. I think a lot of the concepts that, that I'm talking about have been covered before, but probably this is one place where you can understand and see how to build agents with the considerations of building it in enterprise systems and specifically for industries like finance and banking where it's a lot of regulation and that happens. No, standard disclaimer, these are my own thoughts and have no affiliations to the companies I work or have worked with. The statements are forward looking and may change tomorrow when a new model drops in. Um, and finally, all the slides and content is Gen AI assisted. These days we have to add the disclaimer for two things. One is transparency and the other is the more engineers and researchers and product people start using these Gen AI tools and understand as end users, the more we can bring it for the users we build for in the enterprise systems. Okay, so who am I? I am a Napurni or as John Mark said, Anna. Um, I was, I am a product lead at JP Morgan Chase with the AI research team. Previously, I was a machine learning engineer with Tiffin, which is a fintech startup based out of Colorado and New York, and was a data consultant back in Deloitte. So I have 10 plus years of building systems within the finance industry. Um, and I uh, recently moved to London, if anybody cares. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about LLM agents. The new opportunities that they bring, the emerging challenges, and what that means for the products that we are building. Autonomous tool use is a key capability, and it's the cornerstone of any agentic system that we're building right now. We want to rely on defined and validated tools and allow agents to use them autonomously. However, we must not disregard that choosing this tool is still a non-deterministic process, and it requires oversight. For finance and banking specifically, most processes have at least two steps of approval required before any decision making. And we must understand how we bring that determinism into the systems we build. How do we employ the um, action verification with more than just human in the loop? The next is multi-step reasoning. Uh, while a lot of frameworks offer thought, action, and play-by-play -play of the agent reasoning, decision-making, and planning, it's important that this information is surfaced to the user. And we need to start thinking about a fine balance where we don't have a dump of all the information that of the thought and action versus just giving an answer to the question that the user has asked. Uh, the next is that with the persistence of goals and the agent's ability to almost counteract obstacles that it's getting, we are seeing emergent behaviors that are very exciting or problematic. What happens if an agent refuses to fall, abandon a bad plan or takes repeated actions when they are not required? There are costs associated and then there are unintended risks that we have to make sure that we understand. We need to employ graceful error handling by probably employing bounded goals or interruption mechanisms within the systems that we are building. Finally, most important thing is context awareness. LLM agents are able to keep the history of the actions that they are involved, but as more information is added, what is that point where the information is now saturated and the tools and the goals are misaligned or ambiguous? While guardrails are great, a unique challenge is the trust, which comes in actually two forms. One is the system and the other is the user. Can we calibrate our systems in a way that they are trustworthy, that even with additional context and information, they are uh, in, the, in the lines of what we want them to have? And the second is, do we trust our users enough that they are inputting information that is valid and that is something that the system will learn from and use? All right, so what exists and what do we need for our domain-specific information? The general frameworks are great, 
and they are evolving at the speed, which is a testament to the rapid innovation that is fueling all of us to contribute and build better systems. And they're great to start with. And what we are seeing is the speeding of prototype building. Previously, prototypes used to take three months to one year to take what is something out there in academia, in literature, and make it useful within the finance industry. But now the prototype is within the weeks. The timeline for speeding up coming up with a useful idea and actually building has significantly reduced. But what also means is that we have an extended pilot user testing period where we need to understand what are we building, who are we building for, and what needs to happen. There is a lot of specific domain information that exists in finance, business knowledge, which is embedded, or terminology that exists only within the industry. I assume that is also the case for probably insurance or medical industry. And to be honest, there are a lot of solutions and benchmarks out there. The benchmarks that are available are unfortunately not enough to capture the complexities that exist in the real world. So it's very important for us to use something, start with something general, layer on the domain constraints which exist within the industry you're working in. And finally, a very, very important part of around governance. I think Anita touched upon that as well. But we need to have industry experts who are actively trying to understand and learn what all this innovation means. What is an agentic system? What is not an agentic system? What is the right level of compliance and controls that does not stifle innovation? So it is important that for us as AI researchers, as ML developers, that we bring them, bring the compliance, bring the regulators, the legal, the regulatory authorities within the conversation of what we are trying to build. It's not only important for us to tell them what and why of the build, but also the how. It is easy for, for them these days to understand because large language models have made it easier for us to grasp very complex information. So it's important that when they appreciate what we are building, it's going to make an environment where we are operating from a space of caution and yet we are innovating at the speed that we need to innovate on. All right, so what do we need from the agent frameworks that we require in the enterprises? Now, memory, most agent frameworks have them. There is long-term memory, there is short-term memory, there is some form of episodic or session memory. But what we are seeing while interacting with the users is that we need to be able to edit memory. Now, what does editing mean? It means the flexibility of having a memory that can work with the users. So it goes back to the point of giving the users the agency while still calibrating with trust. Having an editable memory with controls obviously gives more confidence to the enterprise users that the agent memory is flexible and not monolithic and allows for change. The next is meta reasoning, where the agent actually self reflects on the strategies that it's taking. There are solutions, for example, agent as a judge, where you have an external agent understand the actions that it takes. But having the agent self reflect also goes back to the point of what I was talking about, a second layer of approval. Probably the agent self respect reflects, understands, and we, ha we can have another layer to verify what it has built. Next is debugging interfaces. And to be honest, I am seeing a lot of products out there which are helping with understanding decision process. So it's interesting to see what's out there and what's helping the agent developers actually understand what's happening. And the finally most important part is real world integration. Now, MCP servers are great. That's what we needed in the next level for us to go from these agentic frameworks to actually integrating these. But legacy systems are still a big problem or the fact that they are entrenched within the industries that we are working with makes it a problem that we all need to solve and not something that we let go of. So we need to understand how we will have real world integration for applications and legacy systems that exist within the industry. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that when we are building these agent workflows, when we are deciding whether we need a single agent, where we need a multi-agent, what is the role of these agents that I need to describe, what is the description, we need to have human in the loop as the design principle. We can argue that we can limit and scope this system of what we build, but the user should have the final decision on what needs to happen, at least for the time that we are building trusts with the system that we are. And to make sure that the user has the information for them to take the final decision, we need to make sure that the st systems are explainable. 
that the systems are surfaced with, the user is surfaced with information that is important for them to make the final decision on what needs to happen. The next is configurability, the ability for the users to know that the system is flexible such that they can adjust the automation level. They can take control when they want to, they can give back control when they feel that the system is confident enough and they trust it enough to make the right decisions. And final, finally, recoverability. Reversal of agent actions is also something that's coming up where we have made a system, we're confident it has taken a decision, however, we want to go back to the previous state. It exists within the agent frameworks of going back to the state, but giving the user the control of recovering from a previous step is important. So explainability, configurability, and recoverability are some design principles that we need to think about. Okay. Now, uh, how do we think about building agent systems and what mindset should we have? Systems thinking is where we need to have not a linear flow of what we build, not step one, step two, step three, but almost this continuous feedback loop that adds in information from the from the parties that your system is using, uh, getting information and input from. We have to consider emergent behaviors. That is something that's coming up. And with agent use and large language models, we have to make guardrails and controls around it. So we have to design loops rather than linear flows. We have to design integration cycles rather than individual components. The next is co-designing with users. Now more than ever, we need to build systems with the users. I would say up until even a year ago, we would build prototypes, have the users test and validate, and now we would take back. Then we would take back what we need to build, what features we need to add. But now with the rapid innovation and not enough evaluation and benchmarks as I alluded before, the human validation becomes your most trusted source of information for the agentic systems we are building. Users have to be thought as your design partners. We have to understand that build, bringing in the user right now is where we add most value to the agentic systems. The technology is existing, it's evolving, it's rapidly being used. How do we make it usable is where the users come in, which is what I'm reiterating here. Next is the ambiguity. Now, this is also something that I think Anita mentioned, but we are no longer using the machine learning models where you have an input and you have an expected output where you can validate it with the ground truth. Right now, an agent could build a four-step plan or it could build a five-step plan, which essentially does the same thing. How do you convince your leadership and how do you convince your users that the variability that exists with agentic systems is something that they need to be comfortable with? Again, having the users within your initial builds builds the confidence with the users on what they are seeing, what they can expect, and it also recalibrates them because right now all of the enterprise systems are built upon accuracy. That is the number one metric that we are looking for. How do we take that concept and then separate out and bring in the uncertainty that comes with and build to, to make sure that all of us are comfortable with what we are building. And finally, we have to understand that it's not just it in building. We need tools, we need orchestration, we need UX for trust, and we need prompt engineering for making these cross-functional teams that work on building an agent solution right now. So finally, uh, three things. One is, most agentic AI systems are right now succeeding when we are enhancing human capabilities. Systems which are trying to replace humans are not allowing for the key user or the key understanding of how these systems are built. Like I said, it might change tomorrow, but today we have to have augmentation focus on what we are building and how we add value to the enterprises. The next is the design balance between system design, between technicality, and between user needs. This is a this is this has existed before in product, but now the balance has in, has has to be maintained for something that's rapidly evolving. And the third is that the trust and adaptability should be foundational, not an afterthought. This is also something that for a system and enterprise level system, which is regulated, is important for the users and for us to understand when we build it. I think I want time. Perfect timing. Perfect. And this was really, really insightful coming from a large bank and understanding the constraint that, to your point, applied to healthcare as well and other industries and see how to resolve that. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. Absolutely. And thank you.